So this video is for MYP students who are design students and they're wanting to get top marks for Criterion C, in particular Strand 1. So I'm going to talk you through a few points about what you should try to do and include in your summative assessment report so you get top marks. Uh, so first of all, let's have a close look at the uh, assessment criteria for Criterion C Strand 1. It says here you need to construct a detailed and logical plan. So I've highlighted the word detailed and logical. If you want to get top marks, make sure it's detailed and logical. Uh, it describes the use of time, resources, and it should be sufficient for peers to follow and create the solution. Um, so here's how to do it. First of all, identify all the tasks that you need to actually complete to get your product built. So the focus is on building the product. What do you need to do? So once you've got all the tasks listed, then put them in a, a like an ob obvious and logical sequence, step one, step two, step three. Um, so that's important. Uh, the next thing is that when you're talking about all the different tasks you need to do to get your product built, uh, you've got to make it right in such a way that somebody else can understand it. Now, it's very, um, very easy to fall into this trap when you're building something in the design process that you kind of know what you want to build. So you say, oh yeah, do this, do this, do this. And you know what you need to do, but remember, somebody else is actually reading your plan. So you're writing for a third party to look at your plan and that they actually understand it. So this again comes in handy. Once you've got your plan written, ask somebody else to read it and see if it makes sense. And if anything doesn't make sense to them, change it so it actually makes sense. Um, next thing is... Uh, some things that include in your plan. If you want top marks, there must be some kind of reference to time. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can use dates. So it's gonna happen on Friday or it's gonna happen uh, on this date. So reference to time is very important to, um, to building a plan. You can also reference how much time each task take, takes. So for example, if you're building something, so maybe you're building a letterbox, you need to cut the wood. So you can say, I'm gonna cut the wood on Friday, the 23rd of February, and it's gonna take two hours. So that's a very clear reference to date time and the amount of time it's gonna need for the task. Uh, the next thing is, what are you actually gonna do? Remember, somebody else is, you have to write it in a language that somebody else will understand your plan. Uh, also, if you're doing a group project or other people are involved, you need to talk about who is actually doing the task. So, Back to the letterbox example, perhaps you're not allowed to use the saw, your teacher has to use it. Um, so therefore you will say, teacher will cut the wood and it'll take an hour and it will be ready by Friday the 24th. Next step, I will then blah, blah, blah. So in a group project as well, it's very important to assign jobs for different people as well. Um, so also just it, with group work, the delegation, um, so that you've got equal tasks for all the members in your group and you know who's responsible for which task. Uh, the next thing that you really need are resources. So when you're building a letterbox, you need wood, exactly what type of wood, what measurements, um, so uh, what kind of a saw are you gonna use? If you're building a website, what are you gonna build? Uh, use as some kind of a free online website building tool or are you using Dreamweaver? So talk about the actual tools, the technology, and the materials, this all comes under the umbrella of resources. Okay, uh, some other things to consider. Uh, there's a, different, a lot of different ways you can actually uh, present a plan. I'm gonna give you a few examples now. So first of all, here is a very common and popular plan. It's very user-friendly, very easy to read. It's Lego instruction. Now, anyone who picks up a Lego instruction manual, they can follow it. And, and, they don't even use words. So remember, your plan, you don't even have to use words, but as long as somebody else can follow it, um, but you can't use words. So, But that's an example of a very user-friendly plan. Another user-friendly plan is IKEA. IKEA produce uh, flat pack furniture. So the concept is you take it home and then you build it, and that's to reduce the costs. Uh, and help with the transport, transport and a few other reasons, no doubt. But if you look at a manual, IKEA manual, it's very, very user-friendly and it's easy to understand. Other, it, people can pick that IKEA plan up and follow along. 
Another idea that you could do is just a list like numbers. Number one, two, three, step one, step two. So if you don't want to use visuals, that's absolutely fine. You can just use words, but numbering the steps puts it in a very uh, logical sequence. So that's another way you could do it. Oh, change the spelling there. Um, and here's another um, example of a, a plan. So this is a letterbox. I just found this online. If you look at that letterbox, you could, anyone could look at that and work out what they actually need. It talks about measurements. It's very detailed with the measurements. Um, it's got the pieces as well. So you could think about something like that, how to construct something. Or well, this might be just one piece of your plan. You might have some written instructions as well. Here's another very popular um, plan where, uh, that's used a lot. It is a Gantt chart. Now, this is really handy when you're doing a group project. So you're telling, you talk about who's doing which task in your group, but it makes it very clear. It's got references to time as well. So you can see that this task needs to be done. Then we start this task. And then there might be some tasks that are overlapping as well. So you're, if you want to present a plan that's a Gantt chart, that would be a wonderful way. Just make sure you've got the time, the resources, and all the tasks that any so built uh, and, and make your plan that anyone can understand it. Another example is a flow chart. So here's kind of a flow chart, step by one, st step by step, step one, step two, step three, color coded, easy to follow. By the way, these examples here, I don't need you to pay any attention to the actual words. I just want you to get the idea of the visual, what kind of a, st what some, a, a few different uh, styles and plans that you can actually construct. Uh, if you're building something, this is really handy too, <clears throat> and this is for the resources. You might need to come up with a, re a material list. These are all the materials that I need to build my whatever it might be. Maybe it's some clothing. Maybe it's uh, cooking. You need all these ingredients for your cake or whatever it might be. Um, so materials list takes care of the resources in this strand. Uh, okay, here is a very, very user-friendly, easy to follow plan. It is a instructions about how to make, how to bake, how to make and how to bake brownies. And you can see it's got uh, time, references to time, probably cooking time somewhere. Yes, it's got temperatures, it's got the materials. So this is a very, very user-friendly plan about making a product. And here is a simple plan album. I don't know how that got into my presentation. Anyway, I want to conclude with a, bit, uh, a little talk about differentiation. So when your teacher is assessing your work, uh, some of the things they're looking at. Now, if you have a, if you've constructed a plan that contains some details, but people have trouble following the plan, you'll get a maximum score of four out of eight. But if you construct a plan, which actually has time and your friends, and it's got resources, time, time, resources, and somebody else can follow it, you can get a score of six. But if you want to get a score of eight, it needs to be a detailed plan. So add as many details as you can. It also needs efficient use of references to time and resources. So go into detail there as well. And of course, peers can understand, read it and follow along. So it's almost like build the instructions for somebody else. Now, this is actually quite common uh, in, in, in the design field because you might be the designer of a product, but you're not actually building it. So this is where you're telling the people in the workshop or wherever they might be, or a friend, okay, here's, here's what I want. Now, can you please build this for me? So keep that in mind when you're constructing your plan. Okay, for differentiation, um, contains some detail, uh, but uh, yes, I think I've kind of covered that. So you need lots of details. It needs to, uh, efficient use of time and resources. And again, I've said many, many, many times, somebody else needs to be able to understand your plan. Good luck with Criterion C, strand one.